Welcome to a lesson on constructing an isosceles triangle. Let's first review the definition of an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. So looking at this triangle here, this would be an isosceles triangle if two or more sides are congruent. And it does follow from the isosceles triangle theorem that the angles opposite the congruent sides would also be congruent. So it's not part of the formal definition of an isosceles triangle, but it is true that this angle would be congruent to this angle here. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about how we can construct an isosceles triangle. In order to perform the construction, we need a straight edge and a compass. Next, we would start with a segment of a specified length, as we see here. And then if we're given the freedom to construct any isosceles triangle that we want, the only restriction is that the radius of our compass must be more than half the length of this given segment. So if you're given a specific length for the remaining two sides of an isosceles triangle, you can mark that length with your compass. But let's just say we're not given any restrictions. So again, the only restriction is the radius of the compass must be greater than half the length of the segment. So if we put the point of the compass here, and then the pencil of the compass here, which looks like it's past the midpoint, we're going to swing an arc above the segment. So it might look something like this. Now without adjusting the compass, and that's important, we don't want to change the radius of our compass. We're going to take the point and put it on the other end point, and then swing another arc above the segment. So the second arc might look something like this. Now we're going to use our straight edge and make a segment from this end point to the intersection of the arcs, and then another segment from this end point to the intersection of the arcs, and we'll have our isosceles triangle. This would be one side, and this would be the other. So notice how the two congruent sides of this triangle have a length that's the radius of two congruent circles. So we're guaranteed that this side here is congruent with this side here, and therefore we have an isosceles triangle. Let's go ahead and show that one more time where, where we use a larger radius to swing the arcs. So again, we have a segment of a specified length. We'll put one end point of the compass on one end point of the segment, and then just make sure that it's open past the midpoint of the given segment. So if we put the point here and the pencil here, we would then swing an arc above the segment that would look like this. And then without adjusting the compass, we'll put the point on the other end point of the segment and swing another arc above the given segment, which might look like this. And then we'll just make segments from the intersection of the two arcs to the two endpoints of the segment. And that'll be our isosceles triangle. There's one side, and there's the other side of our isosceles triangle. Again, these two sides here would be congruent, and therefore we have an isosceles triangle. I just want to show you one more thing. Remember how the radius of the compass must be greater than half the length of the segment. Here's an example of why. If we put the point of our compass here, and then the pencil of our compass here, notice how it would not be longer than half the length of the segment. So if we swung an arc above the segment, and then without adjusting the compass, put the point on the other end point, and then swung another arc above the segment, notice how the arcs would not intersect because the radius of the circle is not greater than half the length of the segment. I hope you found this video helpful.